Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, August 22nd, taking a look here at our future. So we are seeing a bit more of a pullback. China uh, decreasing their rates. The dollar, so interesting, the dollar euro has the, um, the euro has fallen below parity, which means that it has moved down. The dollar is worth more. That, although it sounds really good to have kind of that strength, um, there is definitely a tipping point because then everything becomes more expensive, which is actually a bad thing. So we kind of go back and forth on this. And um, we're also entering the uh, Jackson Hole Fed um, Summit. And Powell will be speaking regarding inflation at the end of the week. So we've got all kinds of stuff. We also have the Q2 second read coming out. I believe that's on Thursday. So lots of stuff kind of happening here this week as we move on in. So I will be um, watching here for our um, to see where we where we end up going. So we're having this bit of a pullback, which overall. This still could be a bull flag. We don't know. This could be an inverse head and shoulders on the weekly. We've also been prepared for the potential of a head and shoulders, which means we come back here, maybe come up and come down. Right? We have to be open to all of those scenarios. So I would like to point out this morning, watching the, um, the SPY, if I flip over here, you can see this purple line, 416.72. This is the top of a gap that we left um, a week or so ago. So here's the gap. We came right down really close to it within a nickel of it and kind of bounced. So we'll see if we come through, maybe dip into this gap. But the reason I wanted to point this out, not on the weekly chart, but on the daily chart is we have the 20 sitting in this gap. So we're, this morning we'll come in and we'll be down about right here. But then as we watch, this 20 will continue to move up just a little bit, but will it start to kind of peak out and curve over? We're watching for that. On the weekly chart on this um, ES, you can also see that I marked in this line. This was a previous uh, resistance here. Resistance, resistance, resistance. Will it be our support? So this is what's happening right now. The 20 is coming up to meet it. So definitely some resistance sitting or potential support sitting just below. And if I flip back to the weekly chart, we take a look here, we can see, well, that's weird. Huh. Well, I don't know what just happened. Anyway, let's try that again. Nope, I don't know, not, not happening today. Um, you can see that it is, I can do it this way, right? We're sitting, we came right back to this 34. 34, definitely a big area of support previously, big area of resistance. Now we'll see. Is this just like we um, did here where we, you know, were able to rise above it and then fall back below? This would give us a potential inverse head and shoulders. Again, we could have a head and shoulders playing out. This is why it's so important to not have a bias one way or the other. Pay attention to what the price action is and go with it, but be open to both. It's okay to have an opinion. If you feel like the market's gonna go lower, if you feel like it's gonna go higher, that is totally okay. But be open to being wrong. Be open to the opposite action and then just play it. So this morning I am being a bit more cautious. We're seeing tech come back down. But one area I still like is energy. So I was up very, very early this morning and I was watching Bloomberg and uh, some competing opinions about energy. And that this is just all a false rally that could very well be I guess some of the things I kind of look at in it is we are still de dealing with the Putin Ukraine situation and what does that mean as we get colder what does that mean for them you know not just um, uh, uh, oil but uh, natural gas things like this I think that these are going to continue to kind of contract we're also seeing that uh, supply contract rather not uh, not demand supply contracting I also think that with the reports out of New England having oh, excuse me having some energy shortages there as well I think that's going to give us at least in the near term a nice little bump here in energy so I am still bullish on energy I did get out of oxy last week on the news about Buffett 
um, getting approval to take over 50% a stake in it. He has come out this morning, or it came out over the weekend, that he is not looking to take a controlling position in that. Like he'll have, he has the uh, ability to buy the shares, but he does not want a controlling um, role in that. So we'll you know, continue to watch that, but I'll, uh, Oxy's pulling back here this morning a little bit. But the first one on my list here this morning is actually CVX. Now you can look at any of them, XOM or any of those. Go for it. What uh, I'm watching here on CVX is we've had this continuing kind of tightening. Oh, that is not the tool I wanted. Hold on. Boy, it is a Monday morning. and My voice is very raspy, so I apologize. All right, so we have this nice contraction going on. We're getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And with my overall thesis of energy, at least here in the near term, uh, I like CVX. So I'm watching the 160 call. I want to enter that around 159.75 or an opening range break. And I would close it below the AEMA. My targets are 161.16 and 164.66. All right, next we're looking at some downside plays beyond me. So this was, you know, quite a fail here and fail through the 50. And I think we have some more downside. <laughs> Excuse me. I think we have some more downside potential here coming back into this, um, this area of, um, of volume, you see this volume profile. So I think we're headed back toward here and I'm watching the beyond 30 put and I would enter there and this will be slightly in the money. I would enter there right around 28.92. Um, stop if it moves above the 50 MA and my target would be 24.10. All right, next. Um, Procter & Gamble. So basing here under the 200 consolidation here, we had you know a lot of inside action happening here. And consumer staples, I still like this area. Even if we see a little bit of a pullback, as long as we hold on to the 148.60 or and allow these moving averages to kind of catch up. I like the PG 150 call. I would like an entry around 149.75. Go ahead and stop that around 148.70, and I would target 150.63, and then the 200 MA are my targets there. So keep an eye out. We have tech overall selling down. If we continue that move after the first half hour, I would watch VWAP or uh, you know, like maybe a comeback up to test VWAP, see if we fail, um, but really sticking to a little bit shorter trades, not a lot of swings that I'm looking to add on here today. But Apple, Google, take a look at that one. Tesla's coming up. They're get, oh, that's not the right one. There we go. Tesla is getting ready to split next week. They are weaker here this morning, but we will take a look and see if maybe they start to run into their next uh, split next week. And um, what was the other one? Darn it. I had another one I was going to look at. Oh, Downside, Bumble popped up on my list for a downside play. I would take a look at that one. I didn't really have a ton come up on my shorts, which seems kind of odd. But Bumble was one. Docs, D-O-C-S, looking for a move down to that point of control area. And then I would take a look at downside gold if the dollar continues to stay strong throughout the day. If not, you might be able to get a little bounce if the dollar weakens, pulls back a little bit here today might get a little bounce out of any of the gold plays otherwise gold will continue to weaken as the u.s dollar strengthens okay that is it for me here today i hope you have an awesome day if you have any questions heather c giving tree trading.com